for those unfamiliar with my library check series, this is a series where I test out my entire Steam library on the Steam Deck. Not extensively, of course but enough to make a judgement on whether or not this game could be played on Steam Deck. This series, of course, has multiple parts because there's a lot of games on my Steam library. Since the last video, I've made some changes to the rules. So the rules are as follows. We're testing the base game and DLC only. No alternative entries or utilities. And if a remaster or re-release or remake exists that we own, We'll cover that as well. Secondly, delisted titles that we own will be tested on Steam Deck, because some will want to play these games on Steam Deck. This is a fairly new rule, but I'll be skipping most free-to-play titles unless I've personally played them myself. No VR-only titles and open betas will be ignored. Games will be tested in alphabetical order, unless we come across a game series, in which we'll be covering those in chronological order. If any adult games do show up on our list, we'll test them out. You won't see any of the naughty bits, but they will be specifically marked with a warning. And here's a fairly new rule as well. If I have to do a considerable amount of work to get a game working on Steam Deck, then for the purposes of this video, it still fails. And finally, do keep in mind that this is for entertainment purposes. This is not a definitive test. The Steam Deck updates, as does Proton, as do the games themselves. So these results are subject to change themselves. So without further ado, let's begin then. The first game of this list is called Eye of the Dragon. Despite being rated gold in Proton DB, this game does not seem to work for me. It doesn't seem to work under Proton GE either. Furthermore, attempting to abort this game causes issues with the Steam UI, forcing you to restart your Steam Deck. This game fails. The first working game on this list is Icy. It's a 2D action game that's best described as Vanillaware meets Stanley Parable. The game is pretty fun. A lot of the fun in this game is breaking away from the intended path. The game is Steam Deck verified, and it plays like it too. It works pretty well. No tweaks required. This game passes. The next game on this list is Iconoclasts. For those not versed in the English language, this is what Iconoclast means. Of course, both definitions are fairly apt, especially for the game's story. This game is just too much fun, man. This game has been my library for quite some time now, but I only recently found the motivation to download and play it. And honestly, I should have done this sooner. Highly recommended. This game runs basically flawlessly in Steam Deck. You could feasibly turn down the power requirements as well, though I didn't really experiment with that. Next up is Infernax, a game I played all the way through on Steam Deck. I made a full video review on this game, so if you want to check that out, be sure to do so. This game definitely gets a pass. Next up is Injustice, Gods Among Us. I mean, the game seems to work, but it seems like the graphics are quite bugged. You can't even see the HUD. Whatever the case may be, I don't recommend this game. Not in its current state. This game gets a fail. I don't own a Justice 2 on Steam, so I can't test it out though. This next game is called Iron Fisticle. This immediately reminds me of Smash TV, but with a more medieval theme. It's pretty fun. This game would be a lot more fun if you had a second player to play with you though. This works pretty well on Steam Deck. This game gets a pass. Introducing a brand new segment of the series. The Scoreboard. What is the Scoreboard? The Scoreboard is a full tally of all the games we've tested thus far, how many of them pass, and how many of them fail. You'll see the Scoreboard whenever we finish testing every single game in a single letter. In this case, we just finished I. And if you like this video so far, become a high-tech lowlife by hitting that subscribe button. And if you like the video, hit that thumbs up button on the way out. Now let's move on to J. Kicking off the J's is Jagged Alliance Gold. This game doesn't work. It doesn't launch. Furthermore, there are no recent reports on ProtonDB. It runs off of DOSBox, which I know has a native Linux version. But for whatever reason, it doesn't work on Steam Deck. Not even with Proton GE. More extensive testing will be needed. But for now, this game is a fail. Next up is a cult classic, Jet Set Radio. This weird little launcher is busted, and you can't see any of your options whatsoever. But it seems the play is to just keep everything default. Works great on Steam Deck. It's a shame that the sequel isn't on PC. This game gets a pass. The next game is Jotun, a top-down 2D action game with a beautiful art style. This in particular is a Valhalla edition, though I believe that was actually a free update. Not gonna lie, I can't really give a good judgement on the game yet as I haven't gotten far enough in the game yet, though I can say that the game works pretty well on Steam Deck. I mean, after all, the game has a native Linux version that you're running on Steam Deck. There isn't anything that will suggest that this game has an issue on Steam Deck. This game gets a pass. Next up 
is Judgment. This game was also developed by the guys that made the Yakuza games, though I haven't actually played this one yet. The game is Steam Deck verified, and it's got a platinum rating on ProTimeDB, so this game should pose no issues whatsoever. Most of the time, the game runs at 50 to 60 FPS, though in intense action sequences, the game can dip down to its 40s. If you want to maintain a smooth 60 FPS, you should lower the graphical details down to low. Otherwise, if you want to stay at medium settings, this game would be a good candidate for playing at 40 Hz. Highly recommended. This game definitely gets a pass. And the last game representing the Jays is Just Cause. I'm just gonna say this right now, this is a terrible experience on Steam Deck, but technically it does work on Steam Deck. Without knowledge of how to use Steam input as well as the game's controls, you're gonna have a hard time playing this game. The rest of this series has controller support on PC, but this one in particular doesn't. This game technically passes. I'm surprised it didn't end that many games that start with the letter J. Whatever the case may be, let's move on to K. The first game in the case is Akashic Force. The game technically starts with an A, but due to the fact that they use an upside down A, Steam files it under K. This game is extremely difficult to describe, it's an absolute clusterfuck. It's a puzzle-like, rhythm-like game with fighting game inputs. Different characters have different techniques, and doing the tutorial is an absolute necessity. The game works on Steam Deck. This game definitely gets a pass. Of course, actually playing the game itself is an ordeal in and of itself, requiring you to learn the game as to not get your shit kicked in immediately. The next game on this list is Kyo. It's a car combat game, kind of like Twisted Metal. These games have never really been my thing, but it works. This is primarily multiplayer, meaning if there's no population, then there's no real point in playing this game. But I will tell you that this game technically works on Steam Deck. This game so far gets a pass. Next up is Killer is Dead. It's definitely an interesting game. It's got plenty of style, but I'm not sure if it has the substance to compete. Furthermore, the PC port of the game has issues that requires you to manually fix it. The game caps itself at 31 FPS, and the game also crashes as well. The game requires too many manual INI &I fixes to recommend. This game gets a fail. Next up is King Arthur's Gold. One thing you need to be aware of is that this game does not have controller support, meaning you need to use mouse and keyboard controls, which can be quite troublesome for a game like this. The game is primarily multiplayer, but it does have a single player mode that you can play. Surprisingly enough, the game still gets updates, the last update being September 2022. This game passes. Next up is Kingdom Classic. Kingdom Classic didn't seem to register my controls, at least not until I switched to Proton GE. I'm not sure why that would be the case, but it is worth mentioning. You know, I've heard the Kingdom games were really good. I suppose the main issue though is that they just aren't my thing. The game gets a pass though. The final game in this video is Nightfall. The game works but there's no one to play with online. Furthermore, this game requires keyboard and mouse controls, which can be a bit clunky, especially for a game like this. This game passes, but you're not going to be able to play with anyone online anyways. And that concludes this video. As you can see here, we tested every game from letter I to letter K. We tested about 18 different titles. Four of them failed, but the rest of them worked just fine. If you like high-tech lowlife, you should check out the rest of my channel. And if you like the rest of my channel, you should like, subscribe, and spread the good gospel of high-tech lowlife. Furthermore, we have a community Discord server. There's a link in the description down below. Check us out.